Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to more esports news, the latest and greatest from Hex himself. I know I've had a lot of optic news out there, but this is actually dropped in one of his latest podcasts. I will link down below for all of you guys some great insight by him and some of his former CSGO players on franchisement. Of course, the league that's coming up here pretty soon in 2020 will be CWL and some possible hints about players or teams who may or may not be competing inside of that league. It's actually Hector himself, though, bringing to a point about potential salary caps. And along with that, some streaming restrictions for players, which of course would greatly affect his players if they do grab a spot under Optic Gaming. I'm sure many of you guys know the current situation going on. Immortals have won the bid for Optic Gaming, so will they even want a Call of Duty spot? Will they even build a bid for a CWL spot? Is still entirely in question, but Hector bringing a great point going forward about possible restrictions being brought up when it comes time for CWL and what teams will actually have to agree to. Not having that I mean, sort of thing. For, for Call of Duty, there's rumors of that, of that no, franchise it, league coming. So It's 1,000%. It's been announced the whole nine. So what do you think of that? Is that like a good thing for the Call of Duty scene? Yeah, meh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It depends, man. It depends because Is unlike it? unlike Overwatch, yeah. you have you have people. So I don't. I, I was kept away from the Overwatch team, so I don't. I never really got a chance to be a part of their their sort of involvement in involvement the league. in the league. Unfortunately, um, but for that, like I, I I don't know how salaries work, how salary caps work. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously they're not allowed to stream in certain like days and that. And not only that, but we've been able to sort of raise the bar competitively. We did more for competition than Activision did for competition. Right. Now, yeah, they created the game, the field, the ball. That's all theirs, right? But we were the ones that brought in the crowd. We were the ones that, that did all that. So when they franchise, are they going to tell Scumpy, hey, you can't make $190,000 a month on Twitch anymore. And then they're going to put a salary cap on top of that. Like, how does that... So, I guess it depends on the restrictions and how they run the league. And yeah. And when it comes time to actually looking at the released handbook so far for CWL, it's not been updated yet, but this will be the 2019 version I did overview. I found nothing about salary caps or streaming restrictions, although I think it's very fair to say those restrictions and legality, uh, those things to be brought up would probably be in contracts between the organizations and the league itself. It would not probably be made public for all of us to see. So, I think it's very likely there could be some sort of restrictions, especially when it comes to the streaming rights. Of course, when it comes down to the Overwatch League, League, another franchise league I'm sure many of you guys are aware about. They did actually restrict these streamers quite a bit ever since um, of course it was actually leaked by Richard Lewis. Um, the rule book's been looked over by many people out there and great restrictions when it came time for Overwatch streamers in terms of both sponsorships and of course exactly what they could stream and what they could endorse. I mean Overwatch streamers could not even directly promote other games besides that of Overwatch. So there were great restrictions. I'm not really sure if there were salary caps when it came time for the Overwatch League but it's definitely if Hector was is to mention this in a podcast as well it's definitely of a possibility to have salary caps to avoid of course poaching of players you know if you let's say for instance you have a salary cap of 200k for a guy like scumpy optics already paying him 200k therefore he has no incentive to go anywhere else because they're just going to pay him that same amount of 200k a salary cap does make sense um, to some limit to some degree out there but with that being said there certainly will be some sort of stream restriction i am sure of that the only question is now how highly restricted will streaming be for for a league like cwl and exactly Exactly what other things will they restrict from these players and to that point as well you have to think about certain optic players out there like scumpy like crim six uh, potentially a few others or at least a couple of others as well might even retire because of these rulings because hector states it himself if you are making 200k a month plus your own sponsorship deals as long as they don't compete with your organizational sponsors you have the freedom to stream and do whatever you want on youtube so on and so forth why would you then agree to go to a cwl a franchise league which prize pool wise or salary wise is going to limit you and along with your stream and your you're going to make far less money if you are not there for the competition directly and you already have such a brand around yourself there is literally no incentive for scump or maybe even crim six alongside even other players in the league as well or current call of duty players who are big enough uh, you know hector himself says scumpy is a far outlier because he is he makes far more than any other call of duty member probably would but still there certainly be other players out there liable or actually able to make a considerable amount of money if there are salary caps and streaming restrictions for the cwl and so going forward we very likely could see that's even if Optic actually maintain or get a CWL spot as we have five teams announced so far Optic was not one of them Immortals was not one of them We don't even know the future if Immortals in that umbrella who owns Optic Gaming will want a CWL spot in the future But this brings a great point and I'm su super curious as always what you guys think about this If there are salary caps if there are streaming restrictions Could we very well see half of Optic Gaming currently retire from the sport or just kind of go off of their own and play non-CWL events? I think it's very likely but that's the main argument out there the main topic I, I want you guys to leave 
leave a comment down below. What do you think about this? If you were Scumpy, if you were Krim, if you were other players out there who could do it on your own and not be so restricted to a single franchise league, which you maybe do not even need for the future of your brand and your income itself, what would you guys do? Now, also on top of that, I looked through the rule book, kind of just wanted to state some other things out there that I found very peculiar or kind of weird as well. This being another kind of tie over for the Overwatch League, both these leagues, that being OWL and CWL, the Call of Duty Franchise League, will have age restrictions of 18 years or older, which is kind of odd and peculiar, but it seems to be maybe a franchise thing or at least an age you want to tend to when it comes to the LCS or League of Legends in their leagues, you must be 17 years of age. I think CSGO generally is 16 years of age. And then you have Fortnite. I don't know how Epic Games pulls, pulls these kind of things off. Their minimum is 13 years of age which is just baffling in itself. So definitely a rule going forward as well, kind of peculiar. There will be an 18 year old age restriction for the CWL. Top of that, sponsorship restrictions will be in place for CWL players as well. Although it's not too restricted, the list though is quite respectable. Things like uh, tobacco endorsements along with that pornographic endorsement. So uh, Team YP is probably not coming back into the esports scene anytime soon. And also gambling is a huge restriction and very respectable because leagues like CSGO do not restrict those kind of things. So anything gambling affiliated will not be allowed in CWL in terms of sponsorships on the team jerseys or in teams in general, which I, I again, I do really re respect that. And I think the list is actually very long, but not too restrictive in terms of what teams would generally pull in. We don't see many teams out there being sponsored by cigarette companies or, or pornographic companies or uh, gambling companies in the Call of Duty scene, at least not to the extent that CSGO does see it. And if there's one closing point, again, I think Hector made a second great point for all of you guys to kind of discuss in the comment section as well. Very peculiar when it comes to these franchise leagues, as you do cut out the qualifiers. And with that being said, you cut out all the up and coming teams, all the surprise teams who once before, as in terms we have a set number of teams, a set 10 teams for the CWL, they will be solidified throughout the reign of this franchise, unless they have, of course, you know, they're selling their spots, they trade their spots out. But for the set amount of time that they are actually those solidified teams, there will be no open qualifiers. There will be no brand new invited teams out of the norm or no up and coming teams who can actually make a surprising run through a qualifier. You will always see your set 10 teams or whatever number of teams um, as well for the CWL. And that's that's a, a, a giant point that I, I think is going to be interesting for the future of Call of Duty and other franchise leagues. So here's Hector's point about that. It sucks that the open system is going to go away and there's going to be no opportunity for just a random group of four to have this sort of Cinderella story. And it has happened. Like E6, a couple of years ago, I think it was during Advanced Warfare, they had this like sort of Cinderella storyline where they they didn't they didn't win, but they made it all the way out of out of bracket and made it to main stage and all yeah. that. That goes away. And that sucks a little bit because, you know, everybody was invited to this thing, and and if you were good enough on a certain day, you were able, to, you were going to be able to compete against Aches. You were going to be able to compete against, you know, the 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 the, the creme de la creme. So as always, I hope you guys are into the episode of esports news. So much happening this week. We should now. It's just rumors right now. We should know the future of Optic Gaming and what teams they may keep and what direction they might take later on this week. That's not confirmed though. Although Hitch did mention it, but he's he's been mentioning it for quite some time. Just about every single week for the past month and a half, he's been told that the rumors will come to an end and their their future will be decided. So it might be this week, it might be next week. Of course, we'll be back here breaking it down sometime soon for all of you. As always, my name is Jake. I hope you guys all enjoy. Take care of yourselves. Uh, drink some drinks and I will see you all back here sometime soon. Uh, goodbye.